Okay class, we're talking about regulating plant growth. And so first of all, there are some environmental factors that we can utilize to regulate plant growth. And so some of those things that we experience um, in the greenhouse growing situation are shady or dark greenhouse growing conditions, uh, crowded greenhouse uh, bench spacing. We're trying to maximize um, our profitability in our area, so we're growing a lot of plants. So obviously that crowding is a problem. Uh, long production schedules, student projects uh, moving through the entirety of the semester, and long day length, which uh, in the spring season, we're starting to have increasing day length, uh, and cool night and warm day temperatures. Obviously the interior of the greenhouse is regulated, but we have a, a wide swing this time of year. And so we can manage the greenhouse in a way to um, decrease stretching. Stretching is the point where the nodes between sets of leaves um, elongate. And so all of those things uh, that I just mentioned will, will cause increased stretching of plants. We want small compact plants that are able to grow in containers so that they can be sold to the public and so that we can teach and educate on uh, those plants, but we don't want to have that uh, increased stretch, that legginess. And so that's why we're going to talk about plant growth regulators. So PGR is the acronym for plant growth regulators. And um, some of the name brands, Bonsai, PsychoCell, B9, there's a number of different um, products that use uh, gibberellins to affect the cell growth. And so plants applied with plant growth regulators will, uh, both natural and synthetically occurring, will decrease that inner node length. So the plant will still continue to grow, however, it'll shorten that inner node length. So if you're working in conditions such as I mentioned, um, you can apply those plant growth regulators to ornamental plants uh, only. They're not for food producing crops. And so this is a form of growth retardant. However, as the plant keeps growing, even though it's a shorter inner node length, they'll still reach a blooming stage uh, just on a shorter, more compact plant. And when you're growing in packs or cells or small pots, you want a small compact plant growing in there. What then happens is the plant then grows out of that response from the, the growth retardant and becomes the regular size plant. And so I'll show you some examples of those plants. One of them, for instance, is alyssum. We love to grow alyssum in the spring. It can live into the warm season, often reseeding itself. But the plant itself, one individual seed of a plant can grow a plant that's 15, 16, 17 inches wide and maybe half of a foot tall. You can't really grow that plant in a pack without minimizing that growth because I'm doing this with my hands because that foliage grows out almost like a ground cover and then has blooms on the end of it. So we direct seed that and the plants that we direct seed will grow too big and they'll kind of flop out of the container. So if we seed those plants, let them grow to a certain size and then use a growth regulator on them, we get that compact growth and then we get flowers on the top of it. People can take it home, they recognize it as alyssum, and then when they plant it out, it grows out from beyond that and does this that I'm describing. So interestingly enough, some plants such as dianthus, Um, people don't recognize, uh, in the retail market, they don't recognize a dianthus plant or a carnation grown without growth regulators because the small compact plants um, really show off that effects of that growth regulator. It almost looks like a different plant. And so it's interesting to play with that market, see what people know, and then kind of uh, change that based on your growing processes, and then if needed, plant growth regulators. Let's take a look at a test that we did in our greenhouse this spring. Okay, so we took a small pump sprayer and we misted over the plant in soil. We did this when the plants were young. 
this was actually about four weeks ago when we had stuck the plugs um, themselves. And again, we did this on seeded plants and we did this on plug grown plants. But at that period of time, the plant was only taking up, uh, you know, less than 50% of the cell, as you'll see in the pictures. So we missed it over the top. And this bonsai product is absorbed both through the roots and through the foliage. So we did, we did three different things. We did uh, a uniform with pump sprayer, 30 mils per gallon of bonsai on one flat. We did 45 mils per gallon on another flat. And then we obviously had a control where we did, we did nothing. Um, and so that's how we applied the growth regulators. We put that on and we made sure that the irrigation didn't come on for a period of time. I think there was an hour to two hour lag time and then the normal irrigation cycle. We tried this growth regulator on a few of the plants we were growing this year. We had great response on Nobelia. And actually the lobelia was really tight. It had the, the tightest response of any plant. We saw good results on the lissum. Marigold and petunia. You will see that in the data that I'm showing you. Uh, we had some plants that the response was not noticeable. We did not have a good response on verbena and on snapdragons. And so we, we want to make sure this is just a tool in our tool belt for growing plants, both using the natural conditions that we can control, the, the types of um, things that we can implement uh, and apply to the plants, and then this as a, a growth Because the results were so good, in the future, we will implement these same application rates and again, I did not see much noticeable difference between the 30 and 45 mil application. Uh, the, the plants responded um, favorably to, to both applications. So in the future, we will apply that to repeat that process. Um, however, some plants you can grow them up to size and then use the retardant to slow them down and keep them manageable. For in our case, we have a sale and it's one date, it's one time. And so if the plants are just past bloom, then it's no good. If they're not bloomed yet, it's not good. And so we're attempting to use all the tools in our arsenal to get the plants to the perfect stage.